I wanted to update a bit of information uh, on past videos. One about what the activity is going up on the back of what is shown on the planet um, document as being jointly owned by Peter Van Lyshout, Dolph Cook and uh, Darko Kovac. And when I opened up Google Earth to hone in on the area, as you can see here, this is 48 kilometers above the ground. <laughs> That's the eye elevation. And you can visually see where to go. All this land here that has got all the, the bared up bits is what they're doing to the land. And look at the land everywhere else. Look how solid green it is. Look how pristine and beautiful it is. And then look at this bit here. You know, what the? But I tell you that after the last video I did on um, this, what are they doing there? I said it because, um, yes, I've been very much involved with knowing what's gone on in the mining industry for oh, the last 20 years. I've seen too much about it, been involved in SOPs, JSAs and re writing reports and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, from quarries, open cup mines to um, underground coal mines to lots of different uh, mining scenarios. So, of course, when I first saw this, I uh, naturally described what I've seen in many images. The way the layering of the land that they do for the quarrying. Mind you, it's pretty primitive, but then again, um, mind you, <laughs> I've also seen the primitive ones that have been done too. But they actually had licenses to do it. You've got to get environmental impact. You've got to get so many consents. You've got to get so much recognized license and and all of that stuff before you can even stick one shovel in the ground but the one thing I did notice is that if you zoom in you can actually see is that a car or a truck and what about that there that actually looks like it's coming through there now I'm only assuming that the elevation is that way because that's what it tells me in the image. It's supposed to be 198 metres and it goes down to uh, 173 metres. Don't know how they've actually cut into this hill but if you look at it, that looks like a vehicle driving on a road and that just looks like an open cut quarry. And then it was like, duh, Kerry. Hang on, I'll bring something up for you. So what we have here looks visually like a quarry. And what we have over here is an ATSIC search of Nimbin Road Quarry Proprietary Limited, whose uh, principal place of business is Shot 2A, 3220 Kyogel Road, Mount Burrell. Now, locals will recognise that as the shopping precinct, one of the shops, which I'm assuming is the general store. So their principal place of business is quite literally just down the road from this. And the people that are associated with that are Mark James Darwin and Philip John Dixon with previous holder of Adrian Peter Brunock. And if you notice here, like the end date of that directorship was likewise uh, days, six days before his bankruptcy hearing. He did a lot of stuff before his final bankruptcy hearing on the 8th of August. Lots of different companies moving around. Changed Nyepi into his wife's name too. And Nyepi then became a shareholder in um, Rainmaker. Because if you look up here, oops, gone too far. 
So they're the director and secretary, but who owns the shares? 100% of the shares is owned by Rainmaker Group Holdings. This is why I've bought, bought up um, the Rainmaker, because this Rainmaker is in, what, three, four different names. And one of those names is associated with Freedom Summits, yeah. All right, so here we've got Rainmaker Group Holdings. You can see, hang on, I'll take it up the top so you can see, Rainmaker Group Holdings. Now you go down here and you can see the same two people involved, Director and Secretary, Mark James Darwin, Philip John Dixon. Now both of these are members of the Nightcap on Minjimble. Mark Darwin's association with them is questionable at this stage. You know, he could speak for himself. Well, that was actually the purpose of um, one of my bringing out this video, but I thought I'd give an update first. That can be further on anyway. Now, as you can see here for Rainmaker Group Holdings, Nyepi, Loved Ones Tribe and Dixon Rainmaker are all one-third in shares. Now, Nyepi, on the 8th of August 2018, six days before his final bankruptcy hearing, Adrian Brennock transferred everything into Christy Brennock's name and she became the director, secretary and sole shareholder of Nyepi. So Nyepi is Adrian Brennock. Now he did that at the very same time Mark Darwin takes his out of his name and puts it into Caroline Coman's, his partner's business name Love One's Tribe. Phil Dixon likewise takes it out of his name and puts it into the company he owns 100% director, secretary and shareholder of Dixon Rainmaker. Yes, as you can see, Dixon Rainmaker. So the name Rainmaker has come up quite a bit. And when you look at the significance of the explanation of what a rainmaker is, making money out of magic, and then actually coming back and getting those that have previously invested to give more, that is so classic nightcap on Minjimble. So classic. They've set it up in everything they've done right from the word go. They've set it up as a rainmaker, you know, to make magic out, magic money. <laughs> but there, that's just uh, something I thought I would update people on here, is that um, Adrian Brannock through Nyepi, Mark Darwin through Loved Ones Tribe, and Dixon Rainma um, Philip Dixon through Dixon Rainmaker are 100% controlling this company, Nimbin Road Quarry, that has its principal place of business, a quarry has its principal place of business in a shop. Yeah. All right, for this to actually be a, if it is a quarry, for it to be a legitimate quarry, you should be able to find licenses galore and see all this stuff presented through all the different departments. You know, this is the equivalent of mining. And, you know, if this is what I'm looking at, if this is a quarry, if they are mining and cutting away the stone of the land, oh, I just can't tell you how disgusted I am with that. How disrespectful it is. Oh, I just really, really hope that there is some other completely logical explanation for what you're looking at here. That that's not a truck on the road that they're not cutting away the very stone of the land itself. You cannot replace the stone. No? Once it's gone, it's gone. You can restore and help rebuild the land, but once you take the stone, it's gone. You know, I'm oh, sorry, it's just, I have no other word for it that people would understand. It's sacrilegious if that is what they are doing there. Because this is considered sacred holy land.
It is... Uh, I just hope I'm wrong. And I hope that the council get onto them quick, smart, if they are doing this, because they need to be stopped and shut down. They cannot keep taking... I mean, yeah, you can replant the trees, you can love the ground back, but you can't put the stone back. Now, if I was... Anyone in the area, you see any of those trucks coming in and out of this place, follow them. Find out where they're going to. Find out who's buying this stuff off them. You know, get eyes on what's in those trucks. There's... Like, even this, look, we're one and a half kilometres up, Nelly. That looks like an open cut. It just, it's got all the hallmarks of it. What else could it possibly be? I mean, and if that, if that is a car, then look at the size of these buildings. What's in these buildings? And the thing that I find odd here is this smudging. This smudging here almost looks like, I don't know, smoke maybe dulfs out the back doing some biochar, <laughs> I don't know. But that actually looks like smoke. And then I thought, well, could they actually be smelting there? It's, and could they be using that as some kind of a tailings pit? I don't know. You know, seriously, this is a matter of urgency that I really hope Someone's got to prove me completely wrong because if there's any, ever anything I want to be wrong on, it's this. They better not be taking stone from the land. Tell you what, the land is not going to forget that in a hurry and neither are the people that give a damn about it. Sorry, I get a little bit upset. As I said, I've been seeing what mining's done over the decades. You know, there are places that you can drive through central Queensland from the coast where the road goes up and down. It's a straight road and the ground should be flat. But because there's so much mining going on underneath, it collapses the ground. And there are grooves where the ground has collapsed. <laughs> you know, you can see, you can feel it when you're driving over it, up and down. It's like going on a roller coaster ride except it's a lot longer between the ups and downs but it's there and it's so obvious and yeah I, I've, I've had an insider's view I suppose of the mining industry and the damage that they've done and how they work. So I don't want to think that anything has gone on on this land because if there was any permission to be doing any kind of quarrying or mining well there wouldn't be just simply wouldn't be I just no it would not get consent to have it done anyway not on this land that is a water catchment it's also sacred to the um, tribal people this is very sacred because this this is around the heart of a huge creation in in Earth's history is sitting on the ground that a, an ancient super volcano, billions of years old, built. And if these assholes are digging out of the ground, oh, mm, yeah, anyway, I think I better move on before I get too angry. <laughs> Some very generous, thoughtful person sent me a Word document of a copy and paste of a post that was done clearly December 18, 2018. And as you can see from the little thing that comes up there, it's a blog spot that's called nightcapvillagescammers.blogspot.com and uh, the uh, post was called Nightcap Village is Scam Buyer Beware. And uh, I was going to actually read this out, but uh, while I was preparing to bring this upload, I um, heard Mark Darwin say something in a video and I thought, oh, I've got to address that. And I don't want to make it a long video before introducing these videos. So um, I'm just going to introduce this PDF 
and I will discuss it in another video uh, because I think before we get to 2018 it's better to look back to 2012 with an interview that was done by a woman called, hang on, a woman called Lisa Harrison and she's still doing this. She's been interviewing people for a lot of years exploring her own truths. Uh, she was actually quite interesting to listen to um, the way that she's um, been exploring her own truths. Uh, Mark Darwin, on the other hand, yeah, he's like a typical salesman. He talk, 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 talk. And there at some stages, you know, you, you zone out because you think, oh, look, it's just all bullshit and I don't really want to listen. But then I think, oh, damn. I missed all that. I've got to listen. <laughs> I've got to know what he's talking about. <laughs> but anyway, so this uh, post here, uh, you get down to um, it's written by someone that is believed to be Mark Darwin. That is the general consensus. Whether it's true or not, um, that's why I was going to go through the whole post and explore it. So as you can see, it's quite a long post. I'll get down to the bottom here. And this one here. Okay, as you can see, the links come up. So I was curious, all right, who's this blogger on the 9th of January? Now, the post was done in December 2018. And this post was on the 9th of January 2019. So you go and have a look over here. Who's this blogger? He's Mr. Truth's Mirror, and it shows my blogs, Nightcap Village is not a scam. And if you noticed, it was started on January 2019. So it looks like this person here started up an account on that day and has never used it for anything else just to respond to this blog. But anyway, so you click on that and it opens up well, that link that says Nightcap Village is not a scam. <laughs> and it says no posts. And it's like, <laughs> so you've got no posts up there commenting. Because if you look here, this person that signed up, looks like they signed up specifically to leave this comment. Oh, wow. Do they try and make all these points? Look at them looks like a bloody legal document that they're submitting <laughs> yeah um, 154 points that he brings out oh that one was on the 11th of January must have forgotten those ones but there are a few posts yeah on the 9th that he's obviously copy and pasted so clearly from the person that is putting the post up and to the person responding there it is assumed not a fact it's just um, the rumor mill if you want to call it <laughs> that Mark Darwin posted this after he had his falling out and Derek Zilman responded to it under the name of looks like Mr. Truth's Mirror <laughs> with all his 154 points and I suppose it would be uh, pretty logical to s expect that it would be Derek Zillman since Derek Zillman is the one that is always been the one speaking on PVL's behalf and all of these 154 points are around you know pointing out that PVL's done nothing wrong or Peter Van Leishout so it stands to reason that the people that have said that the person responding is Derek Zillman because he's the one that could say all these things nobody else could. Certainly not Peter Van Leishout, because you know what, I don't think that man can speak for himself. But according to this um, post, he certainly has a, had a willing and knowing part in taking money off other people's. But he can't answer that allegation unless, I suppose, a, a process server or something goes knocking on his door with a summons to answer those crimes or allegations. You know, people can make a choice. Like with Mark Darwin, he's got all this apparent evidence. Where is it? 
bring it out. You know, if you want to sit on it, you're gonna you're gonna fall under the weight of it. You know, you cannot keep silent and protect yourself anymore. The interesting thing and the reason why I'm bringing up these videos is back in 2012 because I listened to something on some of Mark Darwin's numerous channels on YouTube with old videos on them and he talked about having a brain tumour at one stage and because it would only come up at that one stage and it's a video I think in about 2016 he did and it's a story he's telling people about how he overcame it by, um, you know, uh, <laughs> meditating and eating properly. And then I was listening to him say that exact same thing in this video of um, where he's been interviewed by Lisa Harrison. And all of a sudden, it suddenly dawned on me, this man here has exactly the same story. Anyone know Greg Braddon? You've all heard Greg Braddon's story about how he had a brain tumour and he healed, he healed himself. But as the story goes with Greg Braddon, and you know, with Greg Braddon, I just don't know about him. I'm not uh, very trusting on a lot of things he says, even though a lot of the messages are, are genuine. I'm just not so trusting on the messenger, <laughs> put it that way. And we all should listen to the messenger because messengers can manipulate that by drawing you in with the knowledge that you resonate with and then slipping you a mickey <laughs> and you won't even know it you'll just lap it up and incorporate it as they've instructed you to do psychologically this is very easy to do with other human beings we do it to each other all the time and don't even realize it so his description mark darwin's description of his brain tumor and how he got over it is just like Greg, Baden, Greg Braddon. Except, uh, you know, I don't think Mark, I don't think he actually went as far as Greg Braddon where he said that he's got x rays and things and doctor's reports to show this. I don't think Mark Darwin actually specifically said he had those things. But he's a salesman, you know. They allude to the facts so that you believe that they have them, but they didn't actually say it. And he's very careful about what he says. Now, I'm going to upload the whole... There's three parts to the interview. And uh, I mixed them all together. It's 58 minutes long. You can watch it in parts through it if you want. But uh, at 38.16... One of the interesting things that I'd noticed about all of um, what uh, the whole spiel behind the Freedom Summits and, you know, these trust deeds and, you know, the way banks are conning you and everything, there was always this impression that I got, well, <laughs> so you learned how the banks did it and now you're just doing it to other people. You think you're the banks getting rich off other people. How can you justify that to yourself? Well, at 38 minutes and 16 in, he starts to bring it up. And I'm not going to play it in here because it never works well to do these things. But go to 38, 16 and listen to how he describes, well, it's not actually fraud. You know, it's kind of deception because we're ignorant. And my mouth dropped because that was the, <laughs> and so did something else on the table then. And that was just, yeah, by mistake. Yep, penny dropped. This is what they actually thought of in their own heads, how they justify what they do to other people. Because it's not fraud and it's not really deception. They're just playing on people's ignorance. And that's what he explains is that that's pretty much what the banks do. Now, the, yeah, he gets into this great big long oh, bullshit explanation about the birth certificate. And, you know, the thing is that what they say about the birth certificate, and, oh, look at all your bills are in caps. You know what? I have never had one bill in all caps. 
In fact, all bills have been addressed correctly. You know, with your name, your first name, second name and last name, all beginning with capital letters as is proper punctuation in constructing sentences so we can communicate as human beings <laughs> and understand very basics like names. I've never had a bill or anything in capital letters. All, half the shit they talk about and that's why I say, you know, it takes so long to get through and listen to them because I zone out. I don't want to listen to their shit because, you know, it just doesn't make sense. It's like listening to a flat earther after a certain while. It's like, seriously, my mind doesn't know whether it's coming or going. It's a sales pitch. And if your mind does start to feel like that, you know you're getting fed a sales pitch that isn't a balanced perspective or an honest one that is giving you all angles to look at. It is creating a constant shift between reality and non-reality. That's why your brain's going, I don't understand this. And it's no matter how many times they explain the birth certificate or the right of how you can claim sovereignty over the land, there's never been anyone that's explained it that actually makes any sense. Yes, sense in the real world. You know, they talk, 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 all these pretty bullshit words and, you know, because they found a lawyer that saw, told them how to say it in legalese and which is another bloody language, it's not even our language. You know, you go to court and as this Lisa points out, is that we are taught English, not legalese. When we go to court, they should be speaking to us in our language, not in legalese. And if the judge can't understand our language, why the hell should everything be translated into legalese so we can understand it from his warped little narrow perspective? No, you cannot put people into a different language that they have never been taught how to understand. Legalese, as we all know, is a completely different language. It's the words that say nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it's the words that dance around and go, oh, look, you know, it looks like we're going to say something. We're going to make a whole paragraph out of making it sound like we're going to say something. And then in the end, all we're just going to do is talk, talk, talk and say nothing. Prove nothing. Wow, that was exhausting just saying it. To actually be a judge, to actually judge conditions on those on the foundation that we speak like that, that we act like that, that we think like that. No. So there's so many things that that come out that Mark Darwin, Adrian Brannock, Mark McMurtry have all connected with a lot of good human beings. And it's those ones that they want to connect with, that you've got passions and beliefs. Because your passions and beliefs will make you look less closely at the deceptive, but, you know, not really deceptive. It's just that you're ignorant. So if you buy into what they're selling, you know, it's not that it's fraud or it's deceiving you. It's just you're ignorant. They set people up. They find those that will be ignorant. And it's not that you are stupid or not intelligent. It's just that you put your trust too readily in the words of salesmen. The way this guy talks so quickly, the way he spills everything off, that's a silver tongue. They all do it. They all have it, that silver tongue. The words just slide off. Yeah. Silver. S yes, things just roll off the snake's tongue. Remember that when you're listening to a silver tongue. Adrian Brannock's got a silver tongue. Mark McMurtry's got a silver tongue. Mark Darwin's got a silver tongue. So do a lot of those in alternative... Um, media like Greg, Brad, Greg Braddon and all these others they've got silver tongues but are they forked tongues or are they telling it to you straight 
I don't know. Don't get mesmerized by the silver tongue. You know, there are so many cultures that talk about the mesmerization, the drawing in by evils. And essentially, at 38.16 on the video that I'm going to upload after this, you will hear how Mark Darwin justifies it. No, it's not fraud. No, it's not deceit. We're just ignorant. That's what they're playing on. People's ignorance. That's vile. That you can recognise that the, the elite corrupt system that's ruling this world, instead of exposing it, you imitate it and try to suppress your own group of little people. Take from them in your own setup of your own, what, I'm going to be sovereign king and queen or whatever of my own kingdom. At the expense of everybody else. There's only a few that have been making money out of this. Very few. So I'm going to finish it up there and leave it there. I, as I said, I will get into this post that um, Mark Darwin apparently was responsible for. Uh, I don't know. We will look at it more closely. But it all starts, this is the one that actually mentions about, that's uh, Peter Van Leishout and um, Tyler Tolman. And people were, the comments that came out in Tyler Tolman's um, page, people that had invested because of these two people and lost out money. And, you know, Tyler Tolman wasn't telling anyone, you know, it's gone pretty much belly up to stop, you know. No, he just went all quiet. Kind of sounds familiar to what Pete Evans is doing right now, isn't it? Apparently, I hear he's copping it a bit on his Facebook over his failed paleo enterprise and also probably accusations against what he sticks his head in the sand over. He's a clear promoter. He's been advised of it and he's still continuing to... Why? Because look at how close they are. All these people, thick as thieves. And remember, that's just a saying, not an accusation. Even though, you know, if it fits, wear it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it at that today. I'll upload this 58-minute uh, one after this so you can listen to the uh, video for yourself. Bye.